You know, maybe there's a more concrete approach. Here, let, let's try this. Oh, God! Michael, what did you do? I made the trolley problem real so we could see how the ethics would actually play out. There are five workers on this track and one over there. Here are the levers to switch the tracks. Make a choice. In this video, I'm going to talk about technology ethics. I'm going to give you a couple of examples and dilemmas. And I'm going to offer you some solutions to think better about technology ethics. So who am I? My name is Peter Oosten, I'm a biohacker and a cyborg futurist. And I write articles and make videos, so if you like this video, do not forget to subscribe to my channel down below. And as a profession, I give webinars about the topics of human enhancement, human augmentation, transhumanism, the impact of technology. And of course, a major theme in these kinds of topics is also ethics. And besides giving webinars, I also deliver keynote presentations and you can hire me for consultancy and advice work. So if you're interested, please visit my website in the link down below. So to give you an overview, I'm going to talk about ethics. I'm going to explain to you what technology ethics is. I'm going to do, discuss a couple of cases and examples, and I will end with a couple of solutions and models and methods to better think about some about technology ethics and especially some cases. So what is ethics? Ethics is moral philosophy and also a system of moral principles. Well, that's also that sounds still a little bit abstract. To make it concrete, it's about how people lead their lives, how they make decisions, how they how they behave in society. And they do it to fit and ethics is about what is good for the individual but also what is good for society one of the major insights i gained was in an interview with Annelien bredenoord and she's like a rock star in this field in the netherlands especially concerning medical ethics and bioethics and she told me that there's always a tragic edge concerning issues and dilemmas in ethics like if you do not have, if you have like a perfect solution to a problem, then it's not really ethics. So ethics is involved where you have to think about and discuss and uh, um, uh, talk about what are the upsides and also for whom and what are the downsides and what are the consequences. But there's no like a perfect solution. Uh, Andy Bredenoord, she um, attributed that statement about there's also always a little bit of tragedy involved in ethics, in ethical dilemmas, to Marta Nussbaum, uh, one famous uh, international rock star philosopher. Um, so that's one of the things you need to consider when you think about ethics. It's like not a crisp and clear, perfect solution for everybody then ethics is involved. And it's also interesting to think about ethics concerning legislation or government policy. Um, sometimes they intertwine, but sometimes things you cannot um, address in a new policy or legislation. So it's more concerned about how people behave, about companies behave, about how governments behave. So that is the domain of ethics. So you have the broad term of ethics and in a general sense but then you also have like different sorts of ethics so you can think about medical ethics so the ethics involved in healthcare and in clinical studies and research but you can also think of the ethics of human enhancement which is my specialization i also made another video about the ethics of human enhancement so what if some people in society are willing and able to upgrade themselves with genetic modification with implants with all these kinds of things and the third um, or there are more but the, i want to focus on technology ethics in this video so technology ethics is involved with what is the uh, what are ethical questions and considerations involved when you um, introduce a new technology in the form of a product or service to the market into the society? What will happen? Uh, and if you might can, if and like you can imagine, it's not only it's not always the case that you can foresee every scenario about when what will happen if a technology is being introduced into the world. And why is technology ethics becoming more important? Well, that's a no-brainer, I think, 
because we are more and more dependent on technology in our society. So think about your use of smartphones, of the internet, and also in the future when we have quantum uh, computing, uh, blockchain technology, uh, the advent in biotechnology, uh, some methods for human enhancement where, where I talked about. So with the growing importance of technology in our world, in our daily lives, in society, then also technology ethics becomes more important because you have to think about, okay, what will happen if we use this technology in this way? Uh, so, and should we use it in that way or do we make other choices? Well, I'll give you a couple of examples further on in this video. And to share free ideas of major thinkers and philosophers on the domain of technology ethics. And the first one is of Bruno Latour. He's a French philosopher. Je, je parle français ne, ne pas très bien. Uh, merci beaucoup, au revoir. Yeah, let's continue. Bruno Latour, he says like, technology mediates how we as a user, as a human, look into how, how it shapes our reality. For example, if you want to search information on the internet, then Google also shapes your reality. And of course, uh, you can also think of virtual reality. That's, I think, the most, uh, um, the best example where technology shapes your reality. But it's an important to, f uh, one important element is not like there's a clear distinction between us as humans and technology. And that's also closely aligned with the work of Professor Peter Paul Verbeek. He's from the University of Twente. And I also interviewed him for my podcast and YouTube channel. Um, like you can see over here and well it's only in Dutch this interview so sorry to disappoint you but one of the major ideas I got from uh, Verbeek who was also heavily influenced still is by Bruno Latour is that um, yeah that technology is what makes us human like compared to other animals we don't have wings or we have sharp claws or other specific uh, characteristics or features but our main um, advantages compared to other species is that of course we have stories we can communicate but also we make technology so technology is is what makes us human and we should look at technology the same way we look at how you breathe air or use water or use electricity so technology is what makes us human and the third idea I want to mention is uh, Juan Enriquez, and I, I, I read his book Right Wrong, and there's some interesting things in this book. And the two most important quotes in this book, I uh, extracted it from Readwise, which is uh, a tool to look at your highlights uh, and also review them. But he says that uh, one fundamental rule, technology changes ethics. So do not assume what is acceptable today will be acceptable tomorrow. And especially, like I mentioned before, we are in the age of exponential changing technologies. Ergo, we are in the age of exponential changing ethics. So technology shapes our ethics. And that's why technology ethics is getting more and more important. And to give you two examples in the book, right wrong by Juan Enriquez. For example, he mentions that the abolishment of slavery was also heavily influenced by the advent in technology because the northern part of the United States, they were becoming industrialized and using machines, while the southern part of the United States, they were more heavily dependent on agriculture. So they also had more vested interest to keep the you know, horrific uh, situation at the time, to keep it the way it was. So that's also why technology changes ethics. And that's the slavery is a historic uh, example, but you can also think in the future when we have uh, meat that is grown in, inside a lab, for example, artificial meat, then are the people in 50 years or 100 years, they look at our times and say, oh, these people in uh, around 20, 2000 or 2020, it's idiotic that they ate animals um, and that's because technology changed it, changed, will change our ethics. And to give you three other examples besides the examples I just gave are in vitro fertilization, deep brain stimulation and self-driving cars. So the first one in vitro fertilization is uh, in 1978 the first baby was born with this procedure. Four 
Uh, Louise Brown was born in 1978. The major consensus in society was that um, getting babies is like a um, device. It, it's, it's, it, um, it's something that God does. And you should not uh, mingle with that. You should not play with that. You should not intervene as humans. But it's so interesting that the moment she was born and it was just a cute, healthy baby, then also the, um, the opinion of society shifted. And because they saw it just like a really cuddly uh, baby, then the majority in society was in favor of uh, IVF. And in that way, also a lot of would-be parents would be helped with the use of this technology. So be before that, they were not able to get children. And now with this new technology, yeah, they were able to uh, become a father and mother. So that is an example of how, uh, and I think something that the researchers also did not foresee, but how, yeah, how ethics changes is uh, changed by technology. The second example is not like a societal example, but more an individual one, is deep brain stimulation. Uh, deep brain stimulation is they put a tiny electrode in the head with uh, patients with Parkinson's, and it helps to reduce the symptoms and also get rid of the tremors, as you can see in this video. But there's a tragic case from the Netherlands where a patient was suffering from Parkinson's and he also got the operation where they put um, deep brain stimulation inside his skull. But then something interesting happened because he got rid of his tremors, but he also changed, uh, the uh, procedure also changed his personality. So he was really introvert and, and shy and modest. And at the moment the deep brain stimulation uh, started because you can control it with, uh, uh, with a tiny computer uh, uh, device. Then he became extrovert, he started to steal things, he started to cheat on his wife, and there was no middle ground. So he also had to make the tough ethical um, uh, how do you say, the dilemma, should I want to get rid of my tremors, but then I had like another personality, or do I want to be my old self, but also still have the symptoms of Parkinson's? So that's really a difficult ethical question. And the third example is about self-driving cars. And there's a famous um, uh, problem concerning ethics and technology ethics is a trolley problem. And that, that question becomes more relevant um, with the use of artificial intelligence and the use of artificial intelligence in cars, so self-driving cars. So if you're driving in a car and you are speeding towards an old lady, um, um, of course, you hit uh, the uh, the system should hit the brakes, but what if it's not able to? Or you hit the old lady, or you um, uh, sacrifice yourself and you go into the side of the um, of the of the into a, you crash into a wall, but then you're dead yourself. So that's really difficult. Or do you continue to drive to the old lady, or you go to the right, but there are uh, five school children, for example. And that's, um, yeah, that's a famous uh, um, uh, ethical dilemma. And what's really nice is in the series, The Good Place, which I really liked, you have the main, one of the main characters is Chidi. He's a scholar in ethics, and he really likes to think and theorize about ethics. And then he, got, um, he gets into the place that he really needs to make a decision concerning the trolley problem. So watch this short clip. You know, maybe there's a more concrete approach. Here, let, let's try this. Oh, God! Michael, what did you do? I made the trolley problem real so we could see how the ethics would actually play out. There are five workers on this track and one over there. Here are the levers to switch the tracks. Make a choice. The, the thing is, I mean, ethically speaking... No time, dude! Make a decision! Well, it's tricky! I mean, on the one hand, if you ascribe to a purely utilitarian worldview... Okay, so, what did we learn? So I hope you're convinced that technology ethics is becoming more important. But what are solutions to better handle these kinds of ethical dilemmas? Well, I want to share three of those. And the first one is that you can um, use institutions, legislations, uh, processes, workflows, 
to uh, incorporate ethical thinking in, in, in companies, in organizations, in governments, all these kinds of things. But the um, uh, disadvantages of this formalization of ethics is that it all also can lead to greenwashing. For example, where there was an ethics council uh, with Google, but it was also dismantled after a week. So, yeah, you really need to, to think about when you hear such an in initiative by a major technology company or maybe by a government organization, like what is also the, what kind of power does this ethical board or ethical council or ethical advisors really have? And the second recommendation I would have is that, and uh, you can also see that more and more, is that in the um, uh, in educational systems there should be more focus on ethics, on technology ethics. So not only by the people who want to become a scholar or academic in ethics themselves, but especially in um, education for engineers, for uh, researchers into biotechnology, also into for entrepreneurs, I think. Um, so it should be like a, a, a main team in our educational systems. So not only focus on the finance or the technology or the operations, but also yeah, think about philosophy um, and talk about these different cases and how you will react and think about what if you introduce a certain technology into the world in a product or service, what, will, what can the effects be on individuals, on the users, but also on society as a whole? Because that's the area of ethics where I talked about. Things for yourself, but also for society. And the third recommendation is that um, you look at guided ethics. And guided ethics, I will uh, spend more time on this recommendation. That's a method uh, developed by, among others, Professor Peter Paul Verbeek, where I talked about in the beginning of, the, uh, yeah, of this video. And it's a method to really um, deliberately uh, talk and discuss and think about ethics. And they use this model in three stages. So first you have the case where you uh, talk about this, the technology and you will not use jargon and then the second phase is a dialogue where you uh, where all the relevant actors are involved and that also you look at what are the values that are involved and how are the values being uh, changed by technology so to give you a concrete example with the case of the deep brain stimulation, you will think of uh, the, the health uh, of an individual, but also the autonomy. And also, yeah, how does the autonomy of that patient being changed as he uses deep brain stimulation? So really discuss these kinds of elements. And the third stage in this model, after you've um, yeah, described the case and had a dialogue among actors about the effects of the values on the values that the technology has, is that you also come up with solutions. And they can be inside the technology. So one thing is, for example, uh, when you have a smart glass, uh, like Google had, then there's also a choice by the designers if there's like a light blinking the moment when the glass is recording. So as that's a, like a deliberate choice in the technology. Um, and the same like what are the, um, the, the, the values and the decisions inside the self-driving car when it's uh, being confronted with the trolley problem. But they do not only stick to technology, they also say you think about the environment. So in what um, yeah, what kind of ramifications and conditions should be in the environment when you use the technology, but also about the actors, the, like the users themselves. To, should they be trained, informed? Um, and maybe, yeah, there are also, uh, think of the deep brain stimulation that like the, if you want to, um, if you have Parkinson's and you want to consider this treatment, then yeah, there should really be enough information and also maybe conversations with people who decided to have deep brain stimulation and who not, do not, and also have enough training about how the device works. So this is uh, to give you an idea of the framework of the guided ethics model. And to give you a little more, bit more elaboration on guided ethics, what I really like are three things. The first one is it's not, like I mentioned, this is also the main idea of the work of Professor Peter Paul Fake. It's not like 
uh, you answer a, a question about technology ethics with yes or no. They state in their report, uh, ethical questions are often framed as dilemma. Should we or should we not accept this technology? But from the perspective of technological mediation, like I mentioned, the, this mediation is an important element with Latour and Verbeek. The main question becomes, how can we deal in a responsible way with our connections to technology? So technology is guided its rules in society and society is guided in dealing with technology. So that's the first one I really like. It's more about how and not yes or no. The second thing is that it's also really important to think of the human values that are important, like freedom, autonomy, uh, privacy, um, uh, um, safety, these kinds of things. And that is really like a fundamental part in this uh, method. And the third thing I really like about their model, their method, is that they say, of course, these are um, technology ethics is something where experts should be involved, but it's more important that like normal people, the, the, the actual users of a technology, they should have that dialogue. Uh, concerning the self-driving car, it should be people that are driving the car that should have this conversation, but, but also maybe people, pedestrians, who, who, who do, do not use a car. Uh, they should also be involved or with deep brain stimulation. It should be also about patients, uh, about, of course, the, the, the specialist, uh, the, the MD, but also the family of the uh, patient. And also concerning the IVF, it should be about potential parents, uh, but also, um, yeah, also general, general public. How do they look at this debate? So it's important that you not only ask the experts, like me, uh, but you really ask everybody to give their opinion and have the dialogue based on these human values. So to summarize, I talked about technology ethics, I gave you a couple of examples, and I give you a couple of solutions and recommendations if you're interested and if you are an entrepreneur or working in government or if you're just interested, if you're a designer or engineer and you're working with new technology to think, really think through and debate and deliberate on technology ethics. If you have a question or a remark or you have experience yourself with technology ethics or maybe with guided ethics, do not forget to leave a comment down below. So thank you for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to my channel down below so when I post a new video you also get a not notification and go to my website if you want to have a free download and you can also go to my website if you want to look at my articles and also if you want to hire me for a webinar on human enhancement human augmentation the impact of technology technology ethics transhumanism or if you want to live, want me to deliver a keynote at your symposium or event or you can also hire me for consultancy and for advice. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you at the next video.